Hi there. Vector diagrams are that one thing you know when it comes to mathematics. Most people ask a question why? Well, I'll explain it this way. These vector diagrams you are seeing on screen right now are just some of the vector diagrams that were examined under the space of two years. So vectors are that one topic that you usually find in your question paper. So if you say you don't want to know how to interpret vector diagrams, you're just disadvantaging yourself. This is Z Online School. In this video, you and I are going to be looking at a complete guide on vector diagrams. We are going to do this in a systematic way. So by the end of this video, you should know what vector diagrams are. You should know how to answer a various kind of questions. And at the end of this video, we've got some study tips that will enable you to answer questions under vectors better. Make sure you watch this video till the end for you to get the maximum value out of it. First, we're going to know what vector diagrams are. Like you can see, we're going to define them first. To define them, we're first going to look at the definition of diagram. A diagram is just a simple drawing using lines to explain where something is, how something works, etc. etc. It simply means a diagram can be used to explain a various kind of things. Now, we're talking about a vector diagram, so we need to know what a vector is. If you looked at the introduction to vectors, you know that a vector is a quantity with magnitude and direction. Therefore, a vector diagram is a simple drawing using lines that represents magnitude and direction of vectors. We need to know how the notation under vector diagrams is. We're going to get this kind of vector diagram, which was shown earlier in this video. You can recognize it, I'm sure. Now, let's break down one of the vectors in this diagram so that we know how it is represented. We're going to look at the vector OQ. As you can see in the diagram, OQ looks something like this here. There's O and Q. The vector is moving from O then going to Q. We've got this 4Q, which represents the value of this vector, and this arrow showing us the direction in which this vector is moving. So you should know that if we write something like this, we're representing this vector here. We've got these two letters, O and Q, representing the points involved to make this vector here and then the arrow showing us the direction in which the vector is moving. Then we have this value here, 4q, which is showing us actually the value of this vector, which is 4q. Now, you should understand that if these two letters are switched, it means we are moving in an opposite direction. So if we said qo, this vector here will change to minus 4q. You should always note that. Now, what I want you to do right now here is you practice what we just learned about right now so far. I want you to be able to represent vector OP in vector notation. I'm sure you've done that by now. Just look for the answer on this screen as you'll find it if you just pause the video and look diligently. With that said and done, now let's look at how questions will come in an exam setup. The first question we're going to look at is one from ECZ, GCE Mathematics Paper 2, 2020, simply 2020. This is the question here. It reads in the diagram below, Q is the midpoint of OC. Before we do anything, let's understand this first part. So they're telling us Q is the midpoint of OC, which entails that Q is exactly in the middle of OC. And therefore, the value of OQ is the same as the value of QC. Now they are also telling us that OABP is a straight line. By telling us that OABP is a straight line, they are simply saying these points O, the point A, the point B, and the point P are collinear or simply in the same line. That's a very important property of these vectors. They also continue saying the vector OA, AB, and BP are equal. Then they tell us OA is equal to 2P, meaning AB and BP also have 2P. Then they also tell us OQ is equal to Q. 
In this question, we are asked to find the following vectors. There is not much of work to do. So let's begin. We are going to find the first vector, which is OB. OB is a very simple vector to start with. It's just the vector of OA plus the vector of AB. Now, we know that AB and OA are equal. So, OB will be equal to 2P plus another 2P. If we add these two together, you can see that these letters here are the same. So, we can add them actually and it will give us the answer 4P. We go to question 2 which is asking us to find BC. Now, for BC, we are going to use the triangle of addition. If you don't know about it, just check the video about the introduction to vectors. In the bonus tip section, you will find more about the triangle of addition. You can get to that section by just getting into the description of that video and hitting the time code that reads bonus tip. BC therefore will be equal to BO plus OC. And therefore we can see BO is just the opposite of this OB we found here. You can see the letters are just switched so I just putting a minus to that and it becomes minus 4P. OC is just Q plus Q. They told us Q is the midpoint here. So the vector here is the same as the vector here. And so we'll be just adding a 2Q. Now, one thing that's important is arranging your positive vectors before the negative ones. So that's what we'll do in this step. After we've done that, another important thing is us factorizing our answer. So now we're going to have a 2 outside the brackets, then we find the number that we can multiply by Q and it will give us 2Q, that number is 1, so we just have a Q. Then for this other side, we know 2 multiplied by 2 will give us 4, so we make sure we have a 2 there that will give us a negative 4P after we expand this. This is our final answer for BC. Now we go to 3 where we are finding AQ. AQ is part of the triangle OAQ, so we are going to use the triangle once again. The vectors we are going to use are the following. So AQ will be equal to AO. Now notice that when we go in the direction AO, we are getting the negative of this one. So it will be minus 2P plus Q. Now, you can see this is already in the simplest form. What is only left is us putting the positive vector before the negative one. And we're done with this question. We now go to question 4 where we're asked to find CP. CP is the vector from C going to P. We're moving from C going to O, the first part, then from O going to P. And so vector CO will be just the opposite of Q plus Q, which is 2Q. So it will, it's going to be minus 2Q. Then OP will just be the addition of these vectors that are the same. 2P plus 2P plus 2P, which gives us 6 P. We are done with this question. We just need to work with the arrangement now. The positive ones first. Then we need to factorize. The common number here is 2. So it will be outside the brackets. Then we find the number that we can multiply by to get 6. And we are home and dry. So this is basically how we can answer a simple question involving vector diagrams. Let's look at the second question that will be a bit more tricky. In this question, the first part will be answered by you. Then the answers will be given to you. Later in this video, we're going to see how those answers were gotten. But for now, we just need the answers. But you can pause the video right now and solve them on your own 
then after you solve them you can check if your answers are matching with the ones i have here then we look at question two in the diagram below oa is equal to a ob is equal to b and ac to cb is equal to one to two this is a ratio that would be very important for us to find part two of the question in part one the vectors are simple like i said you should have paused the video by now and found the vectors for part one you can see a b is just the vector from here to there we're going to use the triangle to find it ac is also a simple vector you need to use this here to find ac then oc you need to use the answer you found in b i hope you got the same answers with me a is equal to a b which is equal to b minus a b is equal to simply 1 over 3 the value of a b we'll look at how that came about for now just know the answer c we are going to have oc and oc is equal to 1 over 3 2 a plus b if the answers are very different from these just write the correct ones we will later look at how these answers came about but because of time we're just going to run through this the most important thing i want us to look at is part two of this question i'm sure by now you've copied the answers for a b and c now let's look at how we can handle question two question two asks us to show that a m is equal to one over six b minus four a what i like to tell most people is that this kind of question is very simple because we already know the answer so in a case that your answer is not equal to this you know that your working is wrong it's different from this you don't even know what the vectors will be but for question two the examiner is so good to you and gives you the answer and you just need to show that truly if you use principles of vectors you can get this answer in this question we've also been taught that m is the midpoint of oc so vector om is equal to vector mc that's very essential in answering this question okay let's begin if we look at vector am it's the vector from a to m and therefore we are going to use the vectors we already have we have vector oa or simply vector ao in the right direction we're supposed to move and we can also find vector om these are the two vectors we're going to use to find vector am or simply to show that am is equal to this answer now if we look at it like this some people might think how are we going to do that because we don't have the vector om but no we do you can remember we found oc and now because we found oc we can actually find om because m is the midpoint or simply the point exactly halfway between o and c therefore vector om is equal to half the value of vector oc and so that's one thing you need to know when we have this sorted out then we can prove that am will be equal to this i'm sure by now you know if we switch these vectors we have a negative one and if we get this half and multiply it by the value of oc we're going to have the following If you did write down the value of OC, I'll give it to you once again. Vector OC was equal to 1 over 3, parenthesis, 2A plus B. Okay, now we need to expand what's here. Nice. I'm sure expanding wasn't much of a difficulty. If you're still wondering what how this 1 over 6 came about, we multiplied this half by the value of oc and oc was a fraction 1 over 3 multiplied by 2a plus b so what we just did is we got those numbers outside the brackets and multiplied them by each other so the 1 and the 1 multiplied by themselves and the 2 and the 3 gave us 6 okay now we are going to arrange this in the proper order starting with our positive ones first you can see there's a here and a so we're going to simplify that Okay, now, if you already know how to work out this fraction part well and good, 
but if you don't know how to do it let us do it in this part here we've got a 2 over 6 a and we're subtracting an a from it when we've got such a representation or simply subtracting one from something it simply means we are subtracting one over one then we're going to find the lowest common multiple of these denominators and we check if one can go into six yes it can how many times six and so our common denominator there will be six and now it's just a matter of knowing how this numerator came about when finding this top part what we do is this we get the denominator of the fraction into this common denominator six divided by six gives us one then that number we get we multiply it by the numerator so one multiplied by two giving us two remember we've got this a and so we put a two a then we subtract the second fraction again we get this denominator here and get it into the common denominator so six divided by one any number divided by one is just that number so we're going to have a six six multiplied by the numerator will then give us a six and this is how we get our top part here then we just work out this top part two minus six that gives us minus four and so our fraction is minus four over six a therefore we continue with this part As you can see, I've arranged the positive one already and I've put the negative one like that to enable me to work out faster. Now, your answer can be just written like this, but the recommended is finishing it up. As you can see, our answer is factorized. This is the importance of learning how to factorize when you're answering questions about vectors. What you do is get the common number in the denominators and you can see it's six so we're changing nothing then you go to your numerators there you can see the common one is one one can go into one and one can go into four so that's how we arrived to one over six being outside the brackets then we write the remaining things it should be noted that what we put in the brackets if expanded should give us what we had earlier And so we've just shown that truly AM is equal to 1 over 6 B minus 4 A. You have successfully reached the bonus tip section. The first tip is about the principles you need to know very well. What you need to do is know these three principles. The triangle law of addition. I'm sure if you know it, you'll be able to know how to find the vectors BC or CB you know that BC is equal to BA plus AC and CB is equal to CA plus AB. The other thing you need to know is factorization. If you've been thinking factorization will never be useful, well, this is that topic that will make you pay for not knowing factorization. If we have such an expression, we first collect our like terms, then simplify if there's anything that needs to be simplified. In this case, 2x minus 5x gives us 3x and 4y minus y gives us 3y. So we've simplified. Now the remaining thing is factorization. You should also note that for better factorization, you should always make your positive terms first, then your negative later. If you factorize, then you see that your answer will be identical to this one. The other principle you need to know about is expanding. Expanding is just the opposite of factorization. So if we got this answer we had here and expand it, we should have the earlier expression that we factorized. Next, we're just going to look at the workings for the vector question that we did earlier. When we're asked to find vector A, B, A, C and O, C in the first part. Okay, now. Vector AB is straightforward, as you can see. Now, for vector AC, you need to know how to use the ratio that you are given in the question, which is AC over CB is equal to 1 over 2. Whenever we see such an expression, we should know that the involved points are collinear. So if we get this full vector, it should be equal to 
the addition of the small vectors that are making up that vector. You should be able to recall this fact. If in this question we are asked to prove that the points AC and B are collinear, we would have just stated that AB is equal to AC plus CB. This can only be true if the points are collinear. Now, we are doing this to find a ratio between AC and another vector that we know. If we had vector CB in this question, there would have been no need for us to do all this math here. Now, because we don't know vector CB, we're just going to use the information from this ratio to be able to get the value of AB in relation to the vectors AC and CB. We know that AC is equal to 1 and CB is equal to 2. So the scale of vector AB is likely 3. And now since we have the scale of vector AB, we can now find the ratio between AC and AB. And then after we do this, we now make AC the subject of the formula for us to know what part of AB that is equal to AC. We cross multiply then have this equation here. Then we divide by 3 on both sides to get rid of the 3 on our left side. And now we can confidently say that AC is equal to 1 over 3 AB. We already have the value of AB, so we're just going to put this expression here into the place where AB is. And therefore, AC is equal to 1 over 3 B minus A. That's how we got our answer. Now, for OC, we're just making use of the answer we found in B. This is the common way vector questions are given. Usually, you'll be given related vectors. For you to find C, you should have found A and B. Vector OA, you can see, is just this vector from here to there. And we've been given it already. It's A. Now, when using the value for AC, we're going to expand this. And I'm sure you know what expanding is by now. After that, we are going to simplify the common terms here, which is A and A. In this question, I've tried to put everything in one working. And so OC will be equal to 2 over 3A plus 1 over 3B. Again, here we're supposed to factorize. You can see our denominators are the same. We check for what number can go into both numerators. That's just 1. So OC will be equal to 1 over 3, 2A plus B. Thanks for watching till the end of this video. Now, it's your job to go out there and find some questions that you can answer. But we decided in this video, let's try to give the people watching a bonus. So here's a question that you can use to practice. Right now, you're supposed to pause the video and try working out these questions. Then after that, you will be given the answers to these questions. Vector CA is quite simple. It's the same as vector BA. For vector OM, one thing or one problem students might find is this vector AM. Vector AM can be found using this representation. I'll just try to explain as quickly as possible. Why are we saying it's negative half BA? Okay. The vector BA is the same as the vector AB. The only difference is the direction. So, vector AB is negative BA. Now, M is the midpoint of AB. Therefore, for us to have AM, we should get the negative value of BA that is exactly half. And this is how this expression comes here. The rest of the working is simple as you can easily figure your way. One thing you should note in part 2 is that the h is just taken as a variable. You remember in tip 2 we found an answer to a question that had some fractions, right? So this h can represent any fraction. And this is why we just take it to be a variable. It should never be mistaken to be as half. It's a variable. So we just take it like a term and multiply it by everything like you can see here and get our answer. In part 3, we need to show that OX is equal to this expression on our right side. 
and that can be done easily as you can see when we get the vectors OC and add it to the vector CX we can have this here what you see is that we are making use of the CX we found here and before we use it we expand it into this earlier form and it's there then we collect the like terms you see there's a Q here and the Q here this H will really be written after the Q because like I said it's usually a number that is unknown and so it, it will be multiplied by these two and give us a certain number which will have this Q. With that said and done I'm sure you've gotten a complete guide about how to handle vector diagrams.